Hello and welcome to the BeamG podcast. Today we are talking about one of the most important choices an author must make, which concerns point of view. In storytelling, people use the term point of view, or POV, to refer to different things. So we've narrowed it down to four definitions. The overall perspective from which a story is told, the scene-by-scene perspective of a story, the narrator's point of view or perspective, and the attitudes or belief systems of the author. First of all, overall perspective. The entire Star Wars saga is, in very general terms, told from the point of view of the two characters that have the least status, the robots, C-3PO and R2-D2. They are not present in every single scene, but they are part of the overall course of events. And in an ironic tip of the hat to their function of providers of overall point of view, George Lucas has C-3PO relate the entire story so far to the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi. George Lucas borrowed this idea from Akira Kurosawa's Hidden Fortress, which tells the story of generals and princes from the point of view of two peasants. These two are involved in the action, but they understand less about what they see going on than the audience does. For an idea of the effect, imagine what the story of Hamlet would feel like for two of the bit parts, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Or actually, uh, don't bother, because this is what Tom Stoppard did in his play and subsequent film, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern Are Dead. Its witty and ironic take on the familiar story demonstrates how choice of point of view can be vital, not only to how the characters, but also how the audience understands the story. It may be fair to say that overall point of view can determine the truth of a story, a subject Akira Kurosawa had explored already in his earlier movie Rashomon. Next, scene-by-scene point of view. In its most technical sense, point of view refers to the way a scene or an event is presented to the recipient, so the audience or reader. In film, point of view is very specific to the way the, a scene is photographed and edited. A direct instance from film is the camera taking the position of a character's eyes, for example in The Silence of the Lambs, when we see the protagonist stumble through the dark through the eyes of the murderer, who is wearing night vision goggles. In these shots, the point of view is the murderer's, But it can be less obvious, as when we see a character, say Cary Grant, standing on a lonely road in the open in the middle of North by Northwest. Then there is a cut to what the character is looking at. So a wide expanse of flat nothing, some cornfields, and in the far distance a crop duster plane. The audience is brought closer to the sensations of the character by seeing what the character sees. Whatever the medium, the presentation of each story event tends to be linked to the understanding of that story event that one specific character has. In prose, this scene-by-scene point of view is connected to narrative mode, first person, third person, and the like, though it is not exactly the same thing. When there is a narrator, who may indeed be omniscient, usually the recipient sees or reads the information content of an event through the perception of a character taking part in that event. That's the point of view character. An easy test to understand who the point of view character is goes like this. We as audience watch or read about a handful of characters in a room. Which of these is the point of view character? One of the characters looks out of a window. A car has pulled up outside the house. Only the character who looked out the window can know this. Do we know it too, as the audience? Then the character who looked out the window is the point of view character, 
because we obtained the information at the same time as the character did. Point of view has to do with who the story is about, or at this scene-by-scene -scene level, who the plot event is about. It doesn't have to be explicit. It may be that we see or read about several people at a dinner party conversing. The prevailing feeling we get from that conversation may well be determined by the way one of the characters at the table is reacting to the conversation. What this shows us about story is that story events don't happen in a vacuum. What occurs, the plot basically, has an emotional effect on the recipient when the recipient is feeling with one or more of the characters. The effect of the conversation at the dinner table would be quite different if the scene is about a father's distaste of his daughter's new boyfriend than if it is about a nervous boyfriend being introduced to his beloved's family for the first time. The father's and the boyfriend's points of view are much at odds and produce such different versions of the event that they may virtually tell different stories. The point of view, the perspective on the events that is related to the audience, determines the story. So our understanding is determined by our emotional connection. Furthermore, if events are told neutrally without being linked to the reaction of one of the characters to those events, then they may have little or no emotional impact at all on us. All of which means that scene-by-scene -scene point of view is necessary for scenes to work in the way the author wants them to, and is a vital part of an author's toolkit. Now, narrator's point of view. Just to recap, usually each scene or event is related from the point of view of one of the characters, even when there is a narrator who may or may not take part in the action. If that narrator does not relate the action through the point of view of one of the characters taking part in that action, then probably the narrator has her own point of view themselves. Strictly speaking, this turns the narrator into a character in her or his own right. Now, the narrator, of course, has a huge influence on the way readers or audiences receive the story. The narrator may have an agenda, be trying to convey a point, a moral or a message, to prove something, or to vindicate her or himself, etc., etc. In this case, the narrator wants something, which means they might set a goal for themselves, or they might need something all of which the readers or audience should become aware of as the story progresses. And hence the author should consider the motivations of the narrator in much the same way as with any other character. Furthermore, it is possible for authors to create special effects with point of view. The following are real examples from successful novels. A character's boots tell the story. A colour tells the story. A worm tells the story. Though, in this case, the reader doesn't find that out until the very end. Now, such a device can, of course, be intriguing and powerful. Again, for the author, it entails considering the narrator as a character. What does this narrator want? Does this narrator exhibit an inner problem that needs to be solved? Some kind of shortcoming or flaw? And so on. And finally, the author's attitude or set of beliefs. Some people use the term point of view when they refer to the prevailing attitude that the subtext of the story brings across. For instance, genres tend to exhibit certain general or thematic points of view. A hard-boiled thriller will typically express a pessimistic point of view, while a romantic comedy would leave the audience or reader feeling more optimistic. So these are then generic attributes in the sense that they are typical of genres. Beyond that, an author's more specific idea or attitude or values, belief system, may well shine through more or less explicitly. Through Chinatown, for example, Screenwriter Robert Town and or director Roman Polanski seem to be expressing the quite distinct point of view that the rich and powerful 
get away not merely with corruption, but with murder and worse. So, that's it for Point of View. Thanks for listening.